Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, it's always fun. Uh, I know God knows what He's doing. Uh, this this will be preached later, but not today. Uh, man, I worked hard on this, and so I worked hard on this too. So it's not like I, I just didn't have just I had the notes with me. That's okay. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Luke. I'm sorry, John chapter eight. John chapter 8, start with verse 1. Man, I'm excited about what God's doing in this house, man. Amen. Let me see. Okay. I'm excited about what God's doing. Matthew, Mark, Luke 8. Luke 8, Luke 8, Luke 8, Luke 8. Did I say John? Sorry, John 8. John. Luke, John. Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I was, I was going to preach out of Luke. So now, now I'm changing. Sorry. I do have a Luke scripture though. John 8 and 1. I hope I'm in the right place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to go uh, start with. Start with. Yeah, we'll start with verse 1. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Have you ever been there? You have Mount of Olives? I didn't know they took you to that there. And early in the morning, <clears throat> he came again to the temple. Where did he go? Yes. When? Early. He didn't sleep in? Early. early in the morning. Early in the morning. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and talked to them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Master, this woman was taken in, the adul in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law demands us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This, is, this they said, tempting him that they might have accused him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. And when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast, first cast the stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest ear to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself, he saw none but the woman, and said to her, Woman, where are, there, where are thy, thy accusers? And no man condemned it. Hath no man condemned it? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for another opportunity to speak your word today. God, I give you another, God, I just give you praise. I give you honor. I give you glory in the house of God. Lord, I thank you for the move of the Holy Ghost that I feel in this place. And I thank you for your presence. I thank you for everything that you've done and all you're going to do. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I was, if I was going to title this, I think I've titled this, Jesus, our conqueror. Yeah. Jesus, our conqueror. I, start, I started writing a book. I haven't, I haven't finished it. I just got the start of it started. It's, it's entitled, Behind the Rock and the Stone. Because Jesus stands between us and the stone that someone's going to throw. And I'm standing behind my rock as the stone is being thrown at me. As I, I, I started writing, it's been, it's been several months ago that I started. I haven't got very far on it. I'm not a writer. I'm just writing some things down and, and trying to get some stuff together. But God began to prompt me to write this, and I began to write some of it. And so I, I call it that because there's so many times in our lives we are... We are in a hard place and someone's accusing us and, and they take us before somebody, not take us physically, but almost they almost treat us like we're second class because we have fallen and some things in our lives are changed and some things in our life don't matter anymore. But they take us to Jesus, expecting Jesus to condemn us. And what does Jesus do? They say, I don't condemn you. 
And so I, I just want to share with you just a few, a few minutes this evening about Jesus is our conqueror. He conquers over those that, that, those that would say, well, do him harm or do her harm. He is our conqueror. He has, he has taken our sin and not only covered it, but removed it from our lives. He conquered death. He conquered sin. He is my conqueror today. Can somebody help me just a little bit? So help me just a little bit tonight as, as I try to take you through Jesus being the, the, the rock that stands between us and the stone. The us and the stone. And listen, somebody may be trying to kill you. Your, your family may be trying to kill you. Your, your, your uh, husband, your wife, your whatever they're doing, they accuse you all the time. But the Bible says that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. And so that spirit of accusation that comes against you is not uh, coming from that person, but it's coming from the devil. Are you with me? Because the devil uses, I don't know if you know this or not, but the devil uses people just like God uses people. That because we cannot, listen, the devil can't do everything by himself. How many know that the devil is not everywhere? He's not omnipresent. How many know that he's not omnipotent? He's not all-powerful? How many know that? How many know that he's not omniscient, not omnipotent, whatever the word is? He's not every, he's not everywhere, all or all knowing. Sorry. He's not, not all knowing. The time that the devil knows what you're going through is when you open up your yap <coughs> and start saying stupid things like, "I knew I would never make it. I knew that God didn't love me like He loved them." Why are they so blessed that I'm so cursed? When you say ignorant things like that, and I don't mean to belittle anybody, but ignorant just means you don't know any better. Whenever you were, uh, whenever you were young, you were ignorant of, of how to drive a car, but you learned, and now you're not ignorant about it. Well, <laughs> some people are ignorant about it. Can I share with you, when you're doing the turnaround thing, you don't go in the lane closest to you. You can still drive on the right-hand side of the road so I can see around you. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> you don't get as close as you can to the grass. You go still right on the right-hand side of the road. I don't know if you know that or not, but in Oklahoma we drive on the right-hand side. Amen. Not the left. I don't care if you're in front of McDonald's, you still go on the right. Okay, anyway, anyway, anyway. Let me get off that box. All right. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Stands between us and those who accuse us. Jesus is my conqueror. Jesus has, he has taken me from, from uh, obscurity and placed me in a place where now I am, I am naked to the world. With all the sin that was in my life. And so now they take me, they drag me in front of Jesus, and here I am. I'm guilty. Ooh, I'm glad y'all are. I am guilty. I have sin in my life. I had, I had sin that had overcome me. I had sin in my life and things going on in my life. How about you? I had stuff that I was doing I should not have been doing. I had places of going that I should not have been going. I had, I had all this stuff and all this trash in my life. And I share with you that this woman was caught in the very act. So therefore, she was naked. And so when they drug her there, she was naked before Jesus and all this crowd. Well, you don't know that. She was caught in the very act and drug out the house. And the good preacher she was with, I don't know, and just let you know, the guy she was with wasn't there, but she was there. And standing naked in front of her accusers and in front of Jesus. Now that's pretty vulnerable. 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 Okay. Thank you. Come on. She's naked in front of everybody. She was embarrassed in front of everybody. She was humble, broken in front of everybody. There's nothing worse than having your sin public. Come on. 
yourself. It doesn't matter if you choose to choose to defend yourself. Church, uh, youth workers, look at me. Look at my nose. We live in a society today where you better protect yourself and you're going to protect this house. Every worker in this church that has any contact with children I need you, if you have not done this, I need you to fill out a background check because I've got to have it on file. I don't care if I've known you all my life. I don't care if you're my cousin. I don't care if you're my auntie. It doesn't matter. If something happens to a child or if they accuse you of anything, the first thing they're going to do is put your picture on the front page of the Seminole Producer. <coughs> Because news is news. True or not. And they're going to come to me and they're going to say, did you do a background check on Matthew? And I'm like, I've known Matthew since he was born. I don't care. Did you do a background check on Matthew? No. Well, thank you for your building. Thank you for every dime you have in the bank. Thank you for everything that you uh, have worked for for the last... 50, 60 years. Thank you for everything because we're going to own that building because you did not check and you did not give reasonable protection to this child. But it came out that wasn't true. Doesn't matter. Welcome to my world. And we have 110 young people on Wednesday night. That's why I have a file full of background checks. And I've known these people all my life. Most of them. But hear, hear me just a second. There's nothing worse than having your worst hurt come. <clears throat> why? Why does, why, why does that happen to people? Why? I'll tell you why. Because the devil sees more in you than you ever saw possible in yourself. And he knows if he doesn't stop you now, he'll never be able to stop you. And so he stops you, tries to hurt you until you, don't, until you won't go any further. He tries to put brakes on your ministry. He tries to put brakes on everything about you. He tries to stop you in your tracks. He tries to stop you in your tracks. Because he sees in you that you can reach somebody greater than I can reach. He knows if he places you in an embarrassing situation that you'll crawl in a hole and say, I can't do this anymore. I'm too hurt. I'm too embarrassed. I'm too scared. All legitimate feelings. Every one of them. If you're, you've been hurt, you've been, you've been hurt and you've been crushed. Listen, I, I said this before in this church and I'm going to say it again. Because, hallelujah. And I'm going to say it again. Come out there. <laughs> so many times, church people get so pious. What does that mean? I'm so holy, and I'm, don't you wish you were as, as me? They get so pious, and I've said it before. Some of y'all need to go through something. I pray that you never have to. But some church people need to know what it's like to cry until you can't cry no more. Some church folks need to, I didn't say you, I said some. Some church folks need to know what it's like to have to look everybody in the face when they've been exposed 
Call your God and angel. Yeah. <laughs> I got some good advice. I heard some good advice one time from a man who said, Yeah, you messed up. <clears throat> But you hold your head up, you walk, and you, got, you just walk and you be who you are. Amen. And if I named his name, everybody in here would know who he was. <sighs> you don't worry about what everybody else says. You just go on. And I share with you, church, that it is time for you to go on. Amen. It is time for you to quit worrying about what everybody else says. And it is time for you to go forward with God. It is no longer, listen, you don't have time to hide. I don't have time. You don't have time to hide anymore. Yeah. Uh, we, we got to have you. Yeah. Has anybody ever been hurt like I'm talking about? Yeah. I think so. But there's some church folks that act like they don't ever do nothing wrong. <coughs> like they've never done anything but live at the feet of Jesus all their life. And I praise God. If you've done that, praise God and hallelujah to you. You need to show me how to do that. But as us normal humans, we have, we have stuff that we have on our lives. And if they call, if they, listen, honestly, come on now, get with me here. If they really, truly drug you out in front of Jesus and exposed you, you may not be in physical adultery, but sometimes you're in spiritual adultery. Come on, you might as well say it. Amen. Sometimes you're in bed with the devil when you should be in bed with Jesus. Come on, I'm telling you. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you side with his arch enemy instead of siding with him. Sometimes, just by the grace of God, nobody snatched you out of bed and placed you in front of a whole congregation and in front of God himself and placed you exposed. Sometimes, sometimes just by the grace of God, it has not come out in public. Y'all think it, don't you? Y'all think it right now. I can hear it. I hear the wheels turning. You think about this. Just a second. Now, take a second. Think about this. The thing that is in your life or was in your life, if everybody knew, how would they treat you? If everybody in the church knew, would they still call you brother? Would they still call you sister? Would they still want to shake your hand? Would they still want to sit by you? Would they still ask you out to dinner? Would they still have to take you to lunch? Would they still pay a bill for you? Would they still hug your neck? Jesus said he would. <laughs> Jesus said, listen, we had a state senator here one time. He lives not too far from here. And back in the early 2000s, we'd go to Mazio's and eat. There'd be a table full of people just fighting to sit next to him. Prestige, you know. They wouldn't buy him a piece of pizza now. <coughs> if he was starving to death. You tell me that's right. That ain't right. But since his sin was exposed, he was rock choking time. Because his sin was open to everybody else. Throw one with one hand, throw one with the other. Because his sin was exposed, he's worse. Does he do everything right, dear God? No. No. No, but it amazes me. I'll give you, I'll give you a Pentecostal example. I'll give you a Pentecostal example. In 1987, people were fighting to get on the stage with Jimmy Swagger. And later in 1987, they didn't know who he was. Jimmy who? James who? I don't know him. Louisiana, is that a state? I don't even know. Right. Amen. That's a Pentecostal example for you right there. Yeah. Did God know? 
So what I'm trying to get across this evening, I'm not doing a very good job of what I'm just trying, is this lady was drugged in front of Jesus. Drugged and thrown down on the ground and accused and accused and accused. And everything they said was accurate. She was caught in the very act of adultery. She was sinning. She should have been stoned because that was the law. They had, listen, they had everything right. They accused her. They brought her. They set her at the authority of God. And said, what's to be done with her? Moses said, stone her. And I love what Jesus' response. I ain't got time for your trivial stuff. Your trifling junk. I ain't got time for it. Where's the guy? Where's your buddy at? How did you know he was, she was in the very act of people and Tom? How do you even know she's in the, the very act of adultery? What, you hanging out the window? What you doing? You see her go in? You, you, you paying? What's, what's the deal? Your buddy set her up? What's going on? That's just things I ask. And so all of a sudden, her here she is, exposed in front of everybody, naked, ashamed, hurt, upset, whatever word you want to put in there, frightened, scared to death because what's going to happen to her? Listen, if Jesus says stone her, they'll take her out and kill her. If they hadn't brought her to Jesus, they'd have gone out and killed her. But they brought her to the conqueror. Somebody help me. Amen. Had they not brought her to Jesus, she would have died. Amen. But they brought her to Jesus. And when they brought her to Jesus, Jesus once again stood up and saved somebody else's life. I don't know. I don't know how you just, I don't understand when I'm getting a hold of this thing. Listen, when you come to Jesus, when you get in front of Jesus, it doesn't matter what everybody says about you, whether it's right or wrong. That doesn't matter because Jesus isn't worried about those things. But when you're standing in front of Jesus, and I'm sure she was probably on the ground. I'm sure she was probably kneeling at his feet. I'm, I'm sure she was down saying, uh, just hoping to God that he would not say, well, I, I just do what Moses said, stone her. I, I know that she's just sitting there in, in, in terror. Can anybody even... even Get your mind wrapped around this lady, what was going through her mind, and what was going on in her life. And, and these, these men had grabbed her and drug her out of the house. And these men had, had embarrassed her. And she was uh, made public and, uh, a public a spectacle in front of the whole city. And she's <coughs> set at the temple, no less. But the church house, she's brought to the temple where Jesus is teaching. And all of a sudden, they begin to accuse her. Can you wrap your mind around what this lady was going through? Here she is, exposed. And the rock stands up. Huh. The rock, the cleft in the mountain. My, prov my provider, my deliverer, my healer, my Christ. My, my cleft in the rock, my, the, the place I run and hide to, my Petra, the place I can go where nobody else can find me, that place where nobody else can exist. I, I, I may be exposed, but he covers me. He, I'm covered up because of him. I'm blessed because of him. I, I'm protected because he stands between my accuser and my sin and says, throw a rock, baby, if you have nothing else to do. But I'm going to stand here between her and you. And if you have, listen, if you have an accusation, that's great. But if you don't, you need to drop your rock. Amen. Amen. Stone after stone began to drop. As they turned and left a naked, beaten, scared woman at the feet of Jesus. Come on. Jesus is my conqueror. He conquers my every foe. No weapon <clears throat> shall. Does that mean there will not ever be a weapon? No. It just simply means that though they shoot at you and though you are wounded, it shall not kill you. It shall not prosper against you. Though you are bleeding and battered and bruised, you still shall not be prospered against, but you shall prosper. Because he is your, he is, listen, Jesus is your conqueror. He has conquered death in your life. He's conquered sin in your life. He's conquered everything that is evil in your life.
Now hear me just a second, please. Hear me just a second. Jesus stands between you. Amen. And he stands here. You can just see him. He's like blocking out. So he won't win basketball games if he don't block out. I just love rebounding because I was always short. And you block out these little punks that are taller than you. I don't, you block out these little punks that are taller than you and they try to jump on me and everywhere else. But you put your rear end and they're and, and, and against them. They can't jump over you. They can't get around you. They can't jump. Because you're leaning on their legs. You're leaning up against them. It's hard to jump. I can do it. No, you can't. You can foul me. You can jump over my back. That's a <laughs> foul. It's always a little run. I just love to get in and mix it up and rebound. Loved it. Loved it. I don't know if I ever scored in high school when you got rebounded and shot it. Because they ain't nobody passing pass it. There's two passes at the shot. And so, the only way I ever, got, only way I ever <coughs> scored in, in basketball in, in high school was getting the rebounds and shooting the ball. Five foot nine, all five foot nine, 145 pounds of me. <laughs> Amen? Amen? That's true. It's true. You know how it is. Walk, you remember this? Everybody used to pop that ball, you know, give them one hand and pop it in their lap. <coughs> This hot off the ground. <laughs> like you did something. You know what I'm talking about. Like you, like you did something. Like you really skying. <laughs> ball, ball, ball below the pad of the backboard. You, you, like you're doing something. I still do that now, but <laughs> I have an excuse now I'm old and fat. So I just. But anyhow. But Jesus is my conqueror. <laughs> Conquered the sin that I was in. The sin that I was in, He conquered. <coughs> he delivered me from it. As we come up on Easter, I have another scripture I'm going to read. Luke chapter. Uh, I don't know if I'll hold it. Luke chapter 24. Verse 45. Verse 45. Are you getting anything out of this? Yes. Okay. Then opened he their understanding. I, I could preach you an hour and a half on that five words. But I'm not going to. I pray to God he opens our understanding. That we get it. That we understand. That they might understand the scriptures. I pray this. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going on, but hang on a second. This is one of my prayers I pray. God, open up my understanding I understand the Scriptures. I want to understand. Verse 46. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it is behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Keep going. We're going to read the rest of the chapter. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are, all, ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I see the promise of my Father upon you. What is the promise of His Father? Joel. Promise. An outpouring of the Holy Ghost. That I'm a witness to. That I'm a witness of. That I am, I am a full-fledged, card-carrying Pentecost. I believe in the power of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I, I said, I, I don't believe in a bunch of phony junk, but I know what I got hold of, and it ain't phony to me. Okay, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem till ye be endued with what? Power. power from on high. You're not any better. You're just a Christian square. You're a Christian to the second power. Amen? Amen? And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem 
with great joy. <coughs> and we're continually in the temple praising and blessing God. So good. Go back to, if you will, my original. Go to 45. Then opened he their understanding that they may understand the scriptures, might understand the scriptures. 46. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to raise and to rise from the dead the third day. Stop just a second. Hear me. <clears throat> I just. You're pretty cute, you know what? Hear me. He's helping me preach, man. Hear me. Jesus died on the cross for me. And for you. Why? Why? He did it so he could conquer death. Conquer sin. He did it so I can be set free and He is my conqueror. Amen. He did it for me. And He did it for you. He suffered and so He could ri rise from the dead the third day. Amen. Three days. Go on. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached. Wait a minute. I'm a word guy. Not that it would be preached. That it should be preached. Hey, y'all got some plan from the speakers? Is that me? Is that my phone? Is that my phone? I don't know. Sorry, guys. Hey, I don't have nothing on there. Shut up. <laughs> it's just fun. I have nothing on there. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Go on. <laughs> I feel like Brother McDowell. Every board meeting I'm at, Brother McDowell's phone goes off five times. And he's like this. Yeah, I'm in a board meeting. Yeah. Yeah, I'll call you back. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Every time. Every time. Sorry about that. I have no idea. It's possessed. Hear me. Hear me just a second. And that repentance and remission not should not would be, but should be preached should. in his name. It should be preached. It should be preached among all nations. Listen, we have a call. It should be preached in all nations. It can't be preached unless Jesus is your conqueror, unless Jesus is your hero, unless Jesus has set you free. You can't preach it. You can't live it. You can't preach it. You can't do anything with it unless Jesus is your conqueror. Go on to 48, please. I'm about to quit. And you're witnesses of these things. What things? Jesus conquering death. Jesus conquering sin. Jesus standing in the gap between a woman and a stone. Between the rock, behind the rock and the stone. There's nothing, guys, listen to me one more time. There's nothing worse than feeling all alone. There's nothing worse. Now, now listen, I don't need people all the time. I kind of like being by myself sometimes. I really do. I don't need somebody all the time beside me. I never was one of those guys that had to have a girlfriend. Uh, I just didn't have to have somebody all the time. You know, there's some people who can't live life without somebody. I wasn't that guy. You know? But hear me. There's a difference between walking by yourself and being alone. Amen. Hopelessness. When you're hopeless and alone. When you're just 
I don't know how else to say it, but alone. Feel empty inside. You're alone. Alone. There's nothing worse than that. But when this lady is standing here alone and naked and bruised and battered, and Jesus stands up for her. Read the scripture. He stoops down and is drawn and writing on the ground. He stands up for her. You with me? He stood between the crowd and the sorry sinner adulterers. He stood up for her. And when nobody had an accusation, he stooped back down. And then he stood up again to show her that he <clears throat> loved her. And though she was repentant, he stood up again to show his authority over the situation. And he said what to her? Let's go back to that and I'll, and I'll close with this. Go back to that. John chapter 8. <laughs> Verse 10, when Jesus had lifted up himself, what did he do? He lifted up himself <coughs> and saw none but the woman and said to her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. I find it interesting. And you can get mad at me if you want. That's okay. That Jesus didn't say, okay, because of grace, you can do what you want. He said, go and sin no more. I believe in grace. Because if it wasn't grace, I would be here. Neither would you, so don't look at me like that. I'm a grace believer. I believe in the grace of God. But I'm also a believer of the soul that sin, sin that shall surely die. What the word said. Yeah, but Jeff, I know. Listen, I know. Our brother Jeff. Yeah, but brother Jeff, I know. I get it. The soul that sinneth shall surely die. But I am so thankful today. And I know this. I didn't preach this halfway the way I wanted to. And y'all got a little quiet on me, so I'm going to I didn't preach this as well as I need to. But I feel like this is what God would have me say today. I could preach it at a sermon which will be here on 9.30. <coughs> I'm not doing that. But I want to tell you something. Just because you've been exposed, and I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to someone. I don't know who you are. I'm talking to somebody. Just because you've been exposed doesn't mean it's over. Because you've got somebody that stands up between you and your accusers. Amen. See, the devil messed up because they took you to Jesus and didn't take you out, just kill you. See, the devil's not really all that smart sometimes. He tries to destroy you with the church, and sometimes Jesus stands up. And just flexes his muscle just because of who he is. See, I, I don't believe in a little skinny Jesus with a little long cloth on a little big cross. I don't believe that Jesus. I, I believe a man stood up. He stood up. He stood up. He stood up. And looked everybody in the face and said, You sorry? Any of y'all not to have any sin? Kill him. But if not, drop your rock. Stood up for her. I don't know about who you are tonight, but God will tell you this. Just because you're hurt, and just because you were embarrassed, just because you were upset, <clears throat> just because they drug you in front of Jesus, they drug your dirty laundry out. I don't know who I'm talking to. I feel like I don't know. Just because you've been drugged through a numb hole, don't mean it's over. It's not over until it's over. It's not over until Jesus says, come on up here. I'm ready to get out of here. It ain't over. It ain't over yet. 
hand over yet. I don't care what the devil said. I don't care what everybody says. I don't care what the accusers say. What does Jesus say? Go and sin no more. I, can, I don't condemn you either. Go and sin no more. I don't condemn you either. Go and sin no more. I don't condemn you either. You're not condemned. You're redeemed. Yeah. I, I, come on, somebody. I'm not condemned. I'm redeemed. I'm the Lord. I was paid for. I, I'm so. He, he, he is my king. He's my conqueror. He's my hero. He, he's my savior. He's my Christ. He's my healer. Amen. He's my deliverer. Right. He's, my, he's my provider. He's my conqueror. Amen. I don't know who he is to you. He may just be a little religious guy on the wall for you. I don't know, but he's real to me. And everything, and it, listen, I know, please understand me. <clears throat> I know I said it real quick, but I gotta get this out. Please understand me. That same lady who Jesus said, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. She had to cover herself and walk back in front of the entire city, still naked and open and ashamed. Just because she wasn't condemned didn't mean she didn't have some shame still. She still had to go back and put clothes on. She still had to face everybody the next day. But she faced them without the condemnation of God. And, with, and, and listen, and she faced them, and everybody that saw her knew what she had done. But just, just hang on with me now. But inside her, she knew that Jesus had proven to everybody else that there was sin in their life too. They just weren't exposed. Come on now. I know I said I would quit, but I got to get it done. There's a difference. There's a difference of being naked and ashamed and not having any hope or being naked and ashamed and know where your hope comes from. Right. There's a difference. The ones that have no hope and have nobody blow their brains out. Yep. Yeah, Robin Williams had the world by the tail. Took his belt and hung himself in his closet until he was dead. Money, fame. Listen, I, I, I get Robin Williams is in movies you don't even know he's in. He had everything this world had to offer and hung himself with his belt until he was dead. How many? That's just one example. I thought Robin Williams was a great actor. I, I liked Robin Williams. I couldn't watch some of his movies because of the filth coming out of his mouth. But I loved him as an actor. One of my favorite movies of all time was Dead Poets Society. Love that movie. It's an old movie. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. I still tear up when they stand on the desk and say, Oh, Captain, my Captain. He hung himself because he was exposed and alone. But you, though, you've been exposed. I'm not alone. Amen. Amen. God, I'm talking to somebody. Amen. I don't know who you were that you decided to come to church at 6 o'clock, but the Lord bless you. Because I had a completely different message ready to preach until about 6 o'clock, 6.15. And God, listen, you guys have to excuse me. Sometimes I uh, mess up words because God's dealing with me. But you have what God's looking for. And that is tenacity. They tried to kill you, but they couldn't. They tried to embarrass you. They tried to shame you. But it didn't work. You hear me? The devil wants you. But Jesus said, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Do you remember the scripture? The devil has desired you to sift you like wheat. Jesus said, Peter, I prayed for you. Amen. Amen. Can I share with you two little praisers? The devil has desired to sift you like wheat. Mm -hmm. 
But Jesus prayed for you. Amen. Jesus prayed for you. Jesus delivered you. And he conquered every enemy that you ever had. But you've got to give your life to him. I'm big on giving my life to Jesus. This is more than just a little religious exercise to me. <coughs> this is more than just coming to church three times a week. Four on a Good Friday week. Right. This is more than that. This is my life. My children are blessed. My family is blessed because of Him. Yeah. Because of Him. Why would I not give my life to somebody who does nothing but bless me? Right. Why would I turn my heart against somebody who all he wants to do is love me and take care of me and bless me? And I, listen, I turn my life and I give it to the devil. All the devil wants to do is kill me. Right. Oh, but you get to have fun while you die. I have fun every day. Amen. Amen. I have fun every day of my life. I have fun. I laugh every day. Even when my kids' shoes are in the floor and I throw them against the door. I laugh <laughs> every day. I know y'all have no kids, y'all know what I'm talking about. You come in and trip over three pairs of shoes and you're afraid to chunk them at their door. My kids told them the other day. It's alright. I'm still a dad. Uh, none, oh, sorry, none of y'all ever did that. Um, y'all, children, would you please come and remove your shoes? <laughs> please. Get your shoe! Can I get a witness? Amen! Thank you. Thank you. Get your stinking shoes. And your backpack, and your <coughs> McDonald's sack, and your <laughs> you bunch of little kids. <laughs> Can I get with that? <laughs> I love the Lord. <laughs>